Oh, hello everyone. Hi, hi, welcome in. Let's get this going. Okay, hello, I'm Jacqueline, if you don't know me. I'm gonna be having the one and only Sir John join the Instagram Live today. I'm super excited. We're gonna be asking all things makeup related, celeb makeup artistry, all the pro tips. It's gonna be really fun. I'm selfishly so excited because I've been a fan of Sir John's work for the longest time. So I can't wait to ask questions. I can't wait for you to learn. Also, we want this to be interactive, so feel free, add your questions below as we go, and uh, we'll try to involve everyone. Hello, hello. Oh, what's a party in here? Okay. Okay, let me see if Sir John is in here. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there we go. I think we are good. I think I accepted through. Let's see if this is gonna, is this working? So it's like in these moments where I realize, am I not tech savvy? There we go. Hello, Hello. how are you? Hey. What's up, Jacqueline? Oh my goodness, so I know good. I was always like now. panic when I go live. I'm like, what if it's not working? What if I don't know how to use a phone? But we're good. you're here. Same. Same. I'm like an analog. <laughs> I know. I'm like, how am I supposed to be a content creator in the social media world? And I like sometimes doing a live is really, really a stretch for me. But I'm so glad you could join. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Look at your beautiful face. Uh, I love it. You know what? I'm a little bit of a blush fanatic, yeah, but I am so selfishly excited to have yeah. you do my glam. I know you're coming to Toronto November 5th, and that's what kind of brought us together yes. today. You've got your master class yes. going on. What can people expect? And can I yes. get a sneak peek of the glam I'm going to be getting? Ooh. Okay, first of all, I see London in this. London's, London's in the building. I see, like, where's everyone tuning in from, guys? I want to know the cities. I want to know the cities. I'm in I'm LA. In Jacqueline, you are in Toronto at the moment? Yes? Okay. Um, I love our global, our global people, you know? So, um, no, but I can't wait to see you, babe. We're going to have a really good time. We are, uh, I'm going to be mm -hmm. there on November 5th, I believe. And uh, so I haven't figured out, like, what kind of glam we're going to do for the class or, like, you know, for our people. I know it's a beautiful, beautiful theater uh, that that good co has put together um, for us. And so um, I'm excited. I'm just excited to be actually near home because I grew up, I grew up in Buffalo in, uh, near Niagara Falls. Um, and I moved to New York City when I was basically like- So you're kid his neighbor. You, you love us up here. Um, yeah, I'm, also, I'm basically, yes, 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 all of that. Because everyone that attends is going to be getting like a little makeup goodie bag. I hear they're pretty epic. Do you have any insight of what's inside or can you tease anything? Puerto Rico, come on, Puerto Rico. Um, I uh, yes, I do. So I called casual some friends just, of mine. Just a casual Charles friend Charles call, you know. Who, uh, call friends. Um, but I used to work for Charlotte for such a long time. She's been so instrumental in my career. Um, and it's it's like yeah, I just so I just I love Charlotte. I call Charlotte. I call it, uh, Jessica Alba, who's a friend. And also, I'm trying to think who else. Just like. There's so many people who have uh, donated cool, cool stuff. So I feel like I'm forgetting so many other brands. Danessa Myricks. I mean, like, there's so many. I don't know. But this is a goodie bag that can actually start your kit. It's pretty healthy, really healthy. Um, and uh, Beauty Blender, shout out to Rianne, who, who I, who's such an amazing businesswoman. So but what I love about the brands, for me, is I grew up, like, for example, even last night, I grew up, I went to a crash at dinner. Uh, to pick a friend of mine up who her name is Julie Wilson. So shout out to Julie. And I saw all of my editor girlfriends. So I grew up around all of these editors and journalists, you know, um, and we were all assistants back in the day. And so we were all cubs. Now everyone's the big cats. So it was kind of cool to see the people. Yeah. And then also to know the people behind these brands. So like, I feel blessed to be able to like, have worked with Vanessa Myers. I uh, love Mario, Patrick, uh, Patrick Ta, like Anastasia, Anastasia, I was at her home. Uh, Friday night, she threw a dinner. I was sitting next to Sophia Vergara, Jessica Alba was her date. So um, it just feels good to totally. be in the beauty community. Sure, you've seen so many evolutions of the beauty world since from when you started. What's something that's been such a noticeable change yeah. in a good way in the beauty yeah. space? Ooh. Um, so I would say that the most noticeable change is the mm -hmm. fact that uh, mm -hmm. everyone's invited to the party. Everyone is not entitled, but should yeah. see themselves from inception in everything that we do. Um, and that wasn't always so, you know, if we were waiting on the beauty industry or the fashion industry to be 
more inclusive, we would still be waiting. So I think that the, the landscape has changed because listen, we live in such a multi culty world right now and we want to feel something, you know, it's so much happening in the world right now. So beauty is a vehicle to feel, feel better about yourself, feel anchored in yourself, feel 10 toes down in who you are. So that's why I love this business. So it's not always totally, about what I you see. That. I also feel like you feel. the beauty world, even just like in terms of brands have expanded so much. How do you navigate like all the clutter of all these new brands and what to test, what to try out? How do you approach it when I'm sure you've got millions of things on your beauty desk to try? It's fun. It's fun. Like, if, like I'm here in my office right now and it's super fun to try new things. But if any person who's like an editor, so we, if you, if you go into stores sure. and you're shop, a great shopper, right? You can look at a rack and tell in three, two seconds sure. if anything there is for you or not. I'm not one of those people who need to look all around. It takes me a long time to shop. No, I know if it's for me or not because you know what works and what doesn't work, you know? So I think the cool, the cool part of being in the business for so long is that we've seen the rise and fall of so mm -hmm. many, not just brands, but products. Um, and so um, but what's tried and true are the things that we always go back to. So I, I know a good mascara when I see it. I know what takes, you know, what a great eyeliner does and when it shows up and how it performs. Like if you think about some of the things that, the reasons why you know the work that I've done in terms of concerts or, you know, Coachella's or whatever that looks like, even in the editorial community, performance is key. So I need products to perform in a way most makeup artists just don't. So um, I think that but when you're on, when you're on the line, when I say on the line, <laughs> when your name is on the line, something has to support you. So that product has to work. And so I don't have the luxury. Of totally. And when you're like a seasoned product, pro, you're like, okay, I just kind of know by the feel, the look, you, you know, right away, it's intuitive at this point. Love that. Okay. Well, that kind of leads me because you know, I wanted to ask about, I mean, obviously you've got some epic Coachella makeups, AKA yeah. Beyonce. What do you do differently? Do you approach makeup differently when it's like an on-stage performance versus a red carpet? Like, what are you looking for in terms of performance? Yeah, that's a good, good question. So, um, two novel different directions. So when I look at, you know, when I look at mm -hmm. editorial is also another thing we can throw in there. So if I'm doing a cover story, if I'm in a controlled environment like a studio, that is going to be easier. You know, we, it's all about skin, complexion, um, making yeah. sure you don't see the foundation. So. Growing up under Charlotte Tilbury, assistant Pat McGrath, you know, working with major photographers, Mario Testino, Anna Leibovitz, if they see foundation in their lens, I would have got, gotten sent home. I would have, they would have told me to pack up today, we don't need you for today. That's how serious complexion is to the editorial community. Um, and then when you look at something like, you know, uh, a red carpet, we want more glamour. We want something, we want forever reoccurring beauty staples. We want, we want like the va-va-voo, <laughs> you know? And, and that also translates into what it can look like for a show, a Grammy, a stage. So, you know, when you work with someone who's basically doing cardio on stage for two hours or, you know, really giving it all they have, it's all about performance. So every, it's duality is key. I make sure that I use a cream foundation and I'll buff a powder foundation into it. I'll use a cream or a gel eyeshadow or even like these guys. I love these Vanessa Myricks color fixes. These are in the bags too. And then I'll tap in beautiful jewel tones on top. Same thing with brows, pencils, and then set them with the shadow. Yes, like so layering things on top, like really makes it longevity. Love that. Key, duality. Duality totally. key creates almost That's like a curious, Keisha, What does that actually look like, I guess, in between songs, and you're like kind of standing in the way as outfit changes are happening. What's like your, go is it like powder that's the go-to? Are you powder puffing in between? Or like, how does, how does that actually work? How much time do you have? Well, classically, you know, yeah, so the thing is, like, you know, for years, yeah. and it, it depends on the person, it depends on the talent, you know, so, but for years, you're all, you're building, you're always continuing to reinforce or build the face. You know, at some point, maybe mm -hmm. there's, you're losing foundation here. At some point, maybe you're losing a brow. Maybe, you know, the lipstick is smudging, which we hope, we don't love. And there's so many technological advances in products now, so there's no need to make sure that the lipsticks don't transfer. But, you know, I, I, you're always mm -hmm. looking with like a forensic eye on what can I create or what can I continue to restructure? So the goal is, it's almost like scaffolding. You know, right. I wanna, I wanna make sure Can you enjoy like watching even TV movies or concerts or anything? Can you enjoy it as a regular consumer? Or are you watching this and be like, oh my God, that concealer undertone is wrong. Like, does it, does it take away in a certain way? Cause you're so hyper-focused? Um, you know what? I I, I always, I'm one of those makeup artists who I don't look, when I meet people, I don't look at, you know, what sure. I would do or what's <laughs> wrong. Uh, not always, not always. Sometimes I'm like, okay, come on now, <laughs> you know, but for the most part, I'm always right. looking at opportunity or what's already working or like what's beautiful about a person. I see, we see as makeup artists, we see beauty and things that people usually don't see. 
in an unorthodox way. Like, for example, I didn't do uh, the Renaissance store because I have contracts and uh, licensing uh, obligations, but uh, Rokeo did. And so I went to this show in Houston with my boys and I had the best time yeah. being in, yeah. going to being in the fucking audience. Like, and going as a going as a guest, you know, it was really cool for me. Um, and I'm looking, sure, I'm having a good time, sure, but I'm I studying the beat. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm curious. So if on all yeah. of your iconic, obviously, looks, can you pick a baby or like a favorite? Or do you have a memory that you're like, oh, I killed that one? Like, what stands out when you look into your whole repertoire? Um, well, I know that the most successful people in general, in any, in any uh, field, they always continue to push the finish line back. So there's a Roman saying that yesterday's glory is yesterday's glory, you know, or yesterday's win is not today's win. So I don't necessarily get caught up in whatever was fun yesterday because we're always kind of like, what's next? What's next? What's new? What can I create? You know, because that feeds us. Um, but I think one of the things that I'll remember for, for the rest of my days is Barbie. So I had the chance to, you know, remake Barbie and, and her, you know, and her tribe um, and make her more inclusive and bring her into our world. And it just made me, it just, it, it's my childhood self was happy. So, but one thing about Barbie, she's an icon, yeah. as we know, we, this is the year of Barbie. But she also, you know, as a young boy growing up, told, who was told not to play with dolls, and then you get a call from Mattel. Oh, yeah. I'm it's like, sure. it was cool. Is there so many things that you yeah. ended up doing that you're like, I never knew makeup would lead me here. Like, what are some things you've been able to do in your career that you're like, Ooh. who would have thought picking Ooh. up some brushes would get me here? Oh. Wow. That's you, oh you're my good. God. You're good. I'm just curious. The thing is, no, I'm really, a super fan. Like, what you need to know is I am a fangirl through and through, and makeup artists are my dream guests. So I'm like dying right now. So I'm like, I selfishly want to know all these things. You wish you need your own show. Like, seriously, I'm talking from me to you. I would say, so what, what, when, when was the time that I looked at yeah. my makeup brushes like, damn, how did you get me here? The White House. I went to the White House with uh, Beyonce for uh, Michelle's 50th, Michelle Obama's 50th, and standing there just like, was like, you know, I saw Paul McCartney and, you know, Stevie Wonder standing there and just like, I'm getting, I'm getting Beyonce to get ready to perform for her for her 50th. That was one of those moments was like, okay, well, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, and then also just like, you know, I remember when I used to go to, when I used to tour, uh, which is, it's, it's so taxing on the body. But I remember whenever I got to cities, I would drop my bags off and just hit a museum. So I'm an art school student. I went to school for art since I was like six. So I just, you know, going to all these museums all around the world and, and seeing how my brushes brought me to these places, you know, um, and all the Met balls and uh, the cover stories that I've done. It just, I don't know, it just feels, it feels, I feel blessed and humbled because we're invited back. And so a lot of makeup artists or hairstylists, stylists, one thing that we all, always have to remember is that we're not guaranteed any person or client, you know, or anything, we are invited back. And so I'm, when I am invited back totally. to do it again, and I think it's also always too, like beyond the actual skill, of course you have to have the baseline talent and the skill, but especially working in your position with your level of clientele and different experiences, I think it also speaks to like, you have to have the etiquette and all these other underlying things that people might not even realize. Mm -hmm. If you can kind of, you know, maybe boast yourself up to a certain degree, what are those extra little elements that you think people maybe overlook beyond makeup that is integral to, to doing what you do? Hey, honestly, it's not, I didn't get here because of the makeup. I mean, you know, I believe I'm a good makeup artist, a great makeup artist, but yeah. it's really all about relationships. You know, the reason I'm here, like I remember Iman told me years ago, you have to turn a moment into a lifetime. And so it's okay to get there, but how are you going to stay there for 20 years? And so it's all about being a destination of energy. I'm here because people like my vibe. And so there's so many people who are great makeup artists, who are amazing hairstylists. I always tell people who are great stylists, but no one wants to be around them. They're not, uh, they're not, they don't make you feel safe. And so for me, it's like how doing the work on myself and mental health is really important to me. How can I make sure that I'm adding to this environment? How can I make sure that I'm moving the needle for my client emotionally? So she can emotionally come in the room and put her hand back down and feel safe. So safety is key. Uh, and, and just knowing when, when to, it's a game of hide and seek. Sometimes you know, have to know when to walk out of the room when your client is having a really important phone call. Don't, don't, when someone has to ask you to leave, that's bad. So there's so many small things. You just need to know when to, you know, when to sh shed light and love, and then when to bow out and, and allow someone a moment with their family or a moment that you don't necessarily need to be around. It's reading the room. If you are able to read the room um, and then add something to it, you'll be wild. Are there extra kind of like elements that you end up doing that I think the average person would think, hey, makeup, okay, you're putting on foundation or a lipstick. 
but is are you doing like the facials beforehand the skincare prep are you flossing the teeth like what are the craziest like extra duties you're doing okay oh okay i'm on here with like okay, red light the therapy LED. like <laughs> i'm red i'm yeah i'm your led in it i'm uh let's see i'm like cryo balling it like whatever it takes to, right. to remove inflammation from the face i'm going to do but also i've been an advocate for wellness right. since before it was popular so i've always been juicing so like for example mm -hmm. kale has 650 percent of vitamin k vitamin k speeds up sluggish circulation when you see dark circles often that is lackluster circulation um beets beets are great because it purifies your blood if we've had too much wine or whiskey or tequila um even things like beta carotene you know drinking pumpkins or uh, carrots are really great for cell turnover so it's like a natural exfoliant so all of these things I've been infusing in my girls. Totally, since, like a full 360 approach. Like I'm curious too, how do you work with like the hairstylist, and, and, the makeup, when you're creating say a Matt Gallo look, does it come to the makeup first? Is it the outfit and then the yeah. hair? Like how do you collaborate when everyone probably has a bit of a different vision? Good. I, I love talking to you. Uh, I would say yeah. it's always about the dress, babe. It's always the dress, the st stylists are like, they come in and we're like the bit, we're like basically, we're the mice yeah. and the stylists are like the bippity boppity boo <laughs> for Cinderella, you know? So when I think about the Met Ball, when I think about the Grammys, it's, it all revolves, you know, that, that uh, mm -hmm. give, give a little commotion for the dress kind of thing. It always is like, that's the inspiration, but this is how she wants to look. This is a character that she wants to become or, or you know, exist within in terms of a range. What can we add to that? And so also when I look at not just red carpets when I look at, when I get a treatment for the first Tiffany's campaign, uh, when I got the treatment for Lemonade or the Beyonce self-title album, all of these things, Black is King, you start to feel like, let me absorb this. You know, let me take some of this in. And I'm a history buff, huge history buff. So, and especially art history. So I wanna go back and see the archives of the Byzantine era, or what can I find from, uh, you know, the, the Victorian era that can, create more emotion you know here in this scene so for me it's like how can i create emotion uh with beauty instead of just dolliness a lot of makeup artists were great or beauty professionals or enthusiasts right. are just concerned about i want to look pretty and so for me beauty is not about just being beautiful how can i make someone look more powerful how can i make them look you know uh a bit uh how can i tell a story so i am a storyteller and these are ways that we communicate our stories or our um, our inspirations through our hands or through, you know, and through different ways. And so when I look at a room that we go into and I see a hairstylist, shout out to Neil, shout out to Kim Kimball, shout out to Jen Atkin, all of my friends who, you know, um, who we all come together. It's like a reunion when we get, to, get, get a chance to work together. But what's really key yeah. is harmony. So to answer your question, what is the biggest takeaway when we start to start glam or whatever? It's harmony. How can we support each other? How can the hair not compete with the face? How can the dress not compete with the hair? So when you see that, when you see harmony on someone, those people love on that woman. You know, when you see that something's not working and the fashion police are like, there's there's a little right. chaos. That's that frustrating that because it's like when it's working, you actually yes. don't really notice because it's all working, but you really notice when it's sticking out. So frustrating. Yes, that's so true. You never know. Like I always tell people about like fillers and, and Botox and shit. Right. You don't know good work. Good work right. you can't see. That's a good one. I'm curious, <laughs> has there ever been a look? Like I'm sure at this point, like with the relationships you've built, like people have trust and they're like, do your thing. We know you get it. But has there ever had to been a point where you're like, hey, the creative integrity, this is what needs to happen. This needs to be the look that you had to fight for, that you're glad that you did. Oh yeah. Ooh, awesome. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh. Give it to um, me. you know what? We are really passionate. We are really passionate about our jobs, like our jobs, are our names, you know, and I'm talking about most makeup artists who are known by the first names only are, you know, we are, we support our families with it. Like our, you know, our legacy is tied into a look or a cover or so it's emotional for us. And so when something is someone has a, a is pushing back on something that doesn't look flattering, if you're in flattering light. So for me, I'm a, I'm a I'm crazy about lighting. And so if I'm on set and I know this is really shit light for my client who happens to be a black woman and you have to shoot black women differently, I'm going to use my voice. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to advocate for my client and myself. Um, and it's not always popular, but this is when you know, need to make sure that your ideas are, are able to translate. You don't have to assimilate. You don't have to, but you should be able to make sure that your ideas translate well. And so there's a way to do everything. There's a way to advocate for yourself that isn't rude or aggressive, but right. I speak up. 
Yeah, no one would say something. <laughs> for sure. And it's not for me. It's for the. It's, it's not for me. It's for the client. It's for the picture. It's for the shot. It's for the campaign. It's for totally. the work. I feel like I've it's even had silly art. situations where you're out with friends and someone takes a flash photo. You're like, that's what I look like. That didn't photograph the same way. How do you kind of, are you just adjusting on the fly when you're seeing things on monitors and cameras? Like what happens if you have to let them go on the red carpet and you're like, hope that photograph's the same way. Or is that something you just, again, adjust to knowing the different scenarios? That's a really great question. Don't hide me up too much. You are good. Okay, so um, I, I would tell you when it comes to lighting, you know, so every, whenever you're a professional makeup artist, we don't, there's, we don't have the luxury of practice anymore. Every time I leave my house for a job mm -hmm. is, the big job. And so, and that's why I take it seriously when I have higher assistants or people who feel the same way about the craft as I do. Um, but I will say that when you have someone and they're about to leave, try to take a Polaroid, you know, have their photographer take, you know, you want to get, you want to see what, what does she look like in bad light, you know, and also make sure that you're talking to your girl so she knows never stand under a spot because it'll make your hair look thin, you know, like talk to them. If you've been on set for years and you have talent that may be new, give some of that knowledge on, on how they can feel more comfortable on um, root for them, you know? And so when it comes to lighting, I'm always changing, adjusting, looking at the right, monitors, right. the monitors. I'm, I'm sure there's like the ideal setup too when you're doing your makeup with the nice lighting, but let's be real. You're on the fly all the time. I'm sure you're running in cars, doing makeup, hotel rooms. Like what's been the craziest kind of scenario yep. getting someone ready? And you're like, I don't know how to pull that off. And it's been like pitch black. I haven't even seen what the makeup looks like. What's that scenario look like? Or is that day to day? Is that happening all the time? Hey, so, so the craziest for me, and we in L magazine was it Harper's Bazaar? L L um, did this chronic like did this whole ish thing around it, which was a back oh. backseat beat they called it. So they were like, so John, we heard about this time. I was Canada. in Vancouver. Shout out to Vancouver. Shout out to Canada in Vancouver, and we I had no time to do her makeup before the Miss Carter show. This is back in the day when you know Miss Carter show the, our, my first tour together. So I met her at the airport with the drivers, you know, with Julius, and I had to, I was in the front seat and I had to give her a beat. You're in the She's front? She's in the back seat. And I'm turning and we're turning and we're like, okay. I'm in the front and we're late. Yes, and we're late. And, she, and when she gets oh. out the car. Just the car sickness alone, <laughs> let alone like so, navigating had, what, mascara in a vehicle? Shocking. I, I planted, I planted my feet in there somewhere, like on both sides of the, you know, that, front seat I remember I was basically I had my elbow in the, the the area where a headrest is and I'm holding her jaw like in her neck so she doesn't move and I'm just working working and you know what at some point you check out you check out when my grandmother used to always say when the spirit meets the hand or the or the vocals or your feet that's when art is created so you any artist any you're dancer like musician the flow, they like check out they or check out and so you're in it you're in it you're in it so I think that was the craziest. And then I had to do the same thing for Al, which is fun. Um, and then I used, to, I used to do makeup in a strip club in Queens. Shout out to Astoria, Steinway Boulevard. And I used to love having to get the girls ready every night. On, and so that, I became really fast, you know, before fashion weeks, before all of the fancy stuff, being in the club with the girls was one of the best experiences. Hey. Craziest. Oh, that's Crazy, awesome. but it was. If you about. could, like, you know, paint the perfect picture, you've got someone sitting down, you put your full time to do your glam. What does that look like? Is that like an hour? Is that two hours? What is what is the dream? Perfect, non rush, non stressful makeup look like? Okay. We're supposed oh. to have two hours. Okay. <laughs> and this is, and everybody yeah. who knows me or knows yeah. this, what the shit that happens, we're supposed to be allotted two hours for glam. Um, but we are not always. Um, it's a luxury to have that much time. So it's easy when it's an editorial and you just have to do skin, like just glowy skin. You want to make them look like just fresh, you know, um, the no makeup makeup. I love no, I love no makeup makeup skin. I love eyes, but the skin should look like skin. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is this my end or your, okay, you're back. That might have, I don't know if that was me or you. Sorry. Uh, my bad. Weird. I didn't okay. know how to silence my phone. Somebody called yeah. me. My bad. Oh, yeah, so, but do. can, can I go back into that? Okay. Cool. Okay. So we're supposed to have two hours. Sometimes like in a concert, we need a little bit more time because I'm doing basically a double face on. And, um, but when you're fast, I always tell, don't ever show a client that you, what you can do fast right. because they'll never give you more time. 
Um, and so it's, it's one of those things I've done a face. I remember for the formation video, mm -hmm. she's standing on the porch, holding the brace, yeah. you know, with the guys in the background, that was like 18 minutes, 18 minutes. Um, I worked with Joan for the Met ball and I was late coming from another client, uh, coming from Carly Claus, shout out to Joan, shout out to Carly Claus. I love you guys. Um, and Joan and I had got Joan together in 30 minutes, but it was all over. It, it, we made beauty history the next day, which was the purple. Oh my gosh. Day. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm curious. I got a lot of questions in when I announced I was doing this from like aspiring or upcoming makeup artists kind of trying to start to assert themselves in their career. What do you, what advice do you give them now, especially now navigating social media and like posting their work on Instagram? What is the best mm. advice for someone starting today? What do you recommend? That's yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get okay. myself a little room here. There we go. The best advice for someone starting today. You know, I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine and also the editors yesterday is that the landscape is so different to come in the same way I did. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. know if it exists in the same way because it wasn't as saturated and this was before Instagram and all that kind of stuff. However, you have the ability to tell your own story and you don't need to wait for someone to tell your story. You don't need to wait. Like, you know, even if you think about the music industry, they used to have to wait for labels. They used to have to wait for an invite to do something or to do to be great. You don't have to wait for anybody to be great. All you need to do is, you know, practice your craft, practice on other people, not just yourself. Um, and that's, that separates a makeup artist from a beauty enthusiast. Um, but what you want to do is just make sure that you do it really well. It speaks directly to your audience. If I can do anything over again, not over again, what I've learned from the generation of social media and the, the rise of YouTube and TikTok is that someone walks the walk that they want to walk. Someone wants to tune into you and your channel every day because it's like CNN or style or it's a network that I know I'm going to consistently get food or be fed from um, you just living your life. So continue to live your life and in color and be colorful um, and speak to your audience. I would say that would be the biggest thing I think that a young makeup artist can do. Also, know your brand. We all have a personal brand. It doesn't even matter if you're like the best mom right. and you bake the best brownies. That's your brand. So know your brand and, and deliver it. And so always show up for yourself. I'm, I'm very protective of my name oh, and we all should be. That. And so I it's think interesting too when you talk about even social media and it's funny how that's become something that is so weaved in the makeup world as well. And there's so many hats that you wear day to day, of course, makeup artist, but then even doing this right now, your personality, your brand ambassador, your creative director, your social media kind of sort, like you're doing all those things. What's another part of kind of this whole industry now okay. that you didn't realize you'd love as much as, as you do besides the actual makeup? Wow. I didn't know I was not talking to you as much as I oh, am today. <laughs> first of all, okay. So I'm, I'm telling well, you, I'm so excited. When the road, I okay? came up first on the fifth. Like I'm like what? seriously, like it's like Christmas to me. I'm counting down the days. Like we're you do the glam on going me. Going to dinner. No. We're going to dinner. So yeah, sorry, we're derailing. Uh, to, we're derailing. To answer your to answer your question, I would say no, yeah, no, no. What so other hat question that was, you had to wear, whether it's been like yeah, being an on-camera personality or creative directing? Like what else have you loved that you've been able to explore? Totally. Can I tell you the truth though? At sometimes, it, to be honest, to be keep it a hundred percent real, it it can be tiring yeah. having to show up and be as multifaceted, right? So, to be honest, I, I look at some of my counterparts, and all they have to do is yeah. show up and be a great makeup artist and go home, and but no one's expecting them to be a big personality yeah. or go on a Today Show or do this thing or move people. Um, but I know that that's my thing. You know, I'm the people's guy, and so women and people in general, they and them. They advocate for me because they see themselves in where I've been, where I'm going, and I, I always use my voice. The most powerful right. thing I have is my voice. It's not my hands. It's me, it's me speaking up. Me, uh, the places in the rooms that I'm, I'm in or the tables that I'm in, I'm not happy just to be there alone. So I'm taking everyone with me. Um, and diversity means so much to me. So if I have any space, if I have any bandwidth, I'm going to represent my community in the best way possible. And if that tires me out, I'm just going to be tired. Oh, and that's when you need a nap. What does your actual team look like? Like, do you have how many assistants do you normally have on hand? How many other artists are you working with? And then beyond that, like, like how big is Sir John's team? Can you spill the tea? So I, I, um, I have, uh, I have, I'm the only beauty okay. person represented at CAA. So I'm a CAA is my agent. And also, um, I have a cool dope management team called scale who I love. Um, shout out to scale. And um, I have an office. I have an amazing uh, executive who works for me. Her name is Kyla. Um, my sister is my producer of all things that you guys see and, and I absorb. Um, and so I love, 
I love just jamming with the band every day. And so I'm also working on a, a big thing that I can't really release right now. And I'm, so I'm, I'm hiring a new team. So I'm kind of between those two things. And, um, but it feels good to, it feels good to have community. It feels good as an artist to tell you the truth. If there are any young talents out there to have someone advocating for you. So it doesn't, you don't need an agent. If as long as you have a, a someone who is, it could be a tax attorney. It could be someone who just writes great emails, have someone advocate for you. Don't ask for your money yourself. Have someone shooting out emails, following up on things. So you can be free to be an artist. So you can be free to create. Because sometimes you lose the love of the art when contracts are, are involved, when licensing or agents and lawyers, you, it changes how you feel about the craft. If you act, talk to any people, anyone, sorry, who's a dancer or musician, and they love the music when and before right. it changed or it started to dissipate because of all the legal get back to the music guys, get back to the, get back to the artistry. And so that is something I challenge myself with and it becomes a North star for me when I right. feel like I'm I feel like you're like, yeah, you've been pulled in so many different directions. I'm sure it's helpful to have so many people that like you believe in and people that you want to be around supporting you. Um, I'm curious, because I touched on this a bit earlier, speaking about like you care about mental health and taking care of yourself. How do you find the balance in the routine when so much of your life has no routine? <laughs> you're like, have I, have I found uh, the balance? You know what? This is what I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the funny thing is? It's like, mm. I, I do the temperature check daily. So when I, and, I, and I always talk to people about this. When people come to my master classes, they're not there to just hear about lashes. And like, my thing is like, I, I want people to feel good. I, I, don't, I have people who cry, it's whatever it is, you're going to feel something. You know, and so because I've felt I've been through so much in my career and so walking and been doing this well adjacent to this business since I was 19 and you walk through the wilderness, you're literally walking through trying to feel, feel your way around. Um, it's like looking for Wi-Fi, you know, you know, it exists and it's there somewhere, but you can't necessarily access it. So it can bring you a lot of depression, you know, when you're starting out, it can bring you a ton of anxiety, uh, you know, until you are seeing some of the rewards or the alignment that you are wanting to receive or, or the feedback you need from the universe. Um, so for me, it's like, how can I stay 10 toes down? How can I make sure that I'm fortifying my soul, soil every day? And what that looks like is remember that all this shit could go away. You know, what can I focus on that is real? And that's how I treat my people. That's how I want to be treated. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's just the basic stuff. And so I don't get caught up in any of the things as much as like, I want to find pockets of joy throughout my day. And so looking for joy or happiness, and this is something that I talk to so many people about. It's like, you're going to be hungry throughout the day. <laughs> no one's happy all day. If you right. find Something's a motherfucker wrong. who's happy all day, You should feel the peaks and, and so, Yeah. Something's wrong. She's not human. You know, so I find, as long as I can find pockets of things that make me happy. And so I moved to LA. I like them. I like blue mm -hmm. skies. I don't, I don't like gray days. I like jumping in my, my truck or my wagon or my Genesis and, and going for a ride. I love my dog. So finding small things that make you happy, bring you joy. Yeah, you talked about like early you. days, you know, that can be hard when you're like just building up the momentum. Was there like kind of a turning point in your career? I don't know if it was when it was meeting Charlotte or assisting for Pat. Like, do you look back at your career and go, oh, that was a milestone, like turning point for me? Absolutely. I remember, honestly, I, I can tell you, I know the year. Uh, it was, you know, assistant oh, yeah. for a while i was happy to be an assistant i was so happy to be an assistant because i just wanted to be in the room you know i was in the harlem you know uh just coming out the strip club it, i would do I'd be at the, the club from seven to two in the morning and then have to be on set sometimes at 7 a.m 8 a.m didn't care didn't need to sleep i just was happy to carry charlotte's luggage pep gay he was uh, a makeup artist sam fine who became my big brother so like i used to sleep on sam's couch you know before i found my apartment at one point so I always have been really blessed to be a student. I think being a student uh, or an understudy and seeing so many great people do what they do. I used to, I remember staying at shows. So I would be backstage at show. I remember a problem. I, we were at Etro in Milan when I met Joan or Givenchy, I think. And I just will always stand by and watch Charlotte talk to the press about what the looks she created. The looks that we were all ideating around. I just always wanted to see how did she deliver it. And so those things kind of fed me um, and I made them my own. And so I love language. I love dialogue. I love having conversation. So I love the people who are great storytellers. And so I remember Charlotte, you know, was like, hey, listen, I want you to be yourself. You don't have to wear black every day. I know what most assistants do. Bring all that here, you know? And so you don't need a reminder to be yourself 
or permission, but sometimes a reminder is key. Um, I remember meeting Beyonce at Tom Ford's first women's wear show, and that interaction is now history. It changed my life. It changed the, the landscape of beauty in general. <laughs> and I also remember, you know, like, yeah, I remember when I knew I needed to get on my own and I couldn't be an assistant anymore. So I had this buffer of like, I can still work with the people. And they were like, so John, you're, you're ready to, I was like, oh shit, is it time? Like, <laughs> can I do this on my own? And, um, and then I got a great agent. I went from being Pat's assistant to being at the same agency as Pat McGrath, Streeters in New York. Um, and I just felt like, okay, now is the time I can change my mindset. Right. This is when I become a business, you know? So I would, and so at that point you're nervous because did I believe in my capability? I believe, but I was actually just kind of pushed out of the nest in a way. And, oh, um, and then I had to fly. You've been flying. Now, Absolutely. Now been flying That's place. so funny. Yeah. I feel like there's times <laughs> that moment when you're like in it, you're like, I think that thing is happening. Do I have it? Do I got to fake it till I make it? Like you're kind of, yeah, like, of course it's natural. I think to, to ask kind of some of those questions. Have there been a point like, or still even current, like current day, is there something when it comes to makeup, you're like, I feel like I'm faking it a little bit. Like I'm, I feel like I'm not good at doing a lip or is there like, what's the one part of the makeup routine that you're like, that's not, not for me. I hate doing a lash. Wow. Okay. I want to know. So I just want to know like the, yeah, like you okay, kind of get so a little is, bit. You're obviously incredible is, and amazing, but good. tell me you hate this putting on an individual lash because I do. I cannot to this day, oh. I don't know how to use a felt pen liner. So, and I wasn't, I remember like, cause it's easy right. for you guys to use it on yourself, right? But when someone's on the outside, using it on you, I can't use, I don't know how to work, use it. So I use, I only, I remember I wanted to do liners. And so on B, really bad when I first started the Miss Carter, Carter show, we're talking about like the, but I wasn't really good at them. And she knew I was not good at them, so she made me do so it. So wait, are you using them like gel pot liners and like and so, brush? Oh, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because I didn't right. have the capability of using a felt marker the way that like a well, little yeah, like, like the ergonomics is like it's backwards um, that you putting it on someone else it's backward it doesn't i mean some people may do it really well but that was always a difficult then it's now it's my yeah. favorite thing to do i love i love it you know so that was one thing i don't have the patience for uh i love individual lashes but i don't really have the patience to do i hate i know it sounds crazy <laughs> i don't really love putting lips yeah, on anybody not. so and i'll tell you why because i'll tell you why I love doing the face, but lips are always an afterthought for me. So, and I, what I realized with working with some of these women, working with some really strong women who know themselves and are, and are really in control of their identity, they need to feel a part of this. So after yeah. I do the face, I'm gonna hand you the lip liner and you're gonna walk me through it. <laughs> and so that's kind of the thing. And I, also, and I noticed that, you know, doing that, they all, people always like to have a little bit of themselves mixed really? in with a look, you know? And so it's not totally void of their own personality. So I think a lip is a great way. And then you don't have to each other. do the lip. Haha, <laughs> even better. And then I don't, That's funny. don't have is to do the Is there other steps that certain people like to do? Like I've heard some people like to like curl their own lashes or do their own mascara. Do you like let people take the reins, you go do your thing? Oh yeah. Just don't mess up and get mascara on the lid. So uh, most, yeah. most people, need to curl their own lashes like it, it, I, we can but i think for a safety concern like if people right. are moving fast hey babe curl your lashes it's super fast it's super easy to do um and uh i love putting mascara on people but some people like to do their i know like chloe kardashian she loves to give herself her own mascara rihanna yeah. loves to do her own lip the cupid's bow like all of these women you have to realize that they know their faces so well, and their faces are now parts of history, you know, and they've been photographed by the best and they've seen the best lighting. So, but we as makeup artists, as professionals, we, we got one more hack in our pocket that you haven't seen, they haven't seen, so that's why we're still there, you know? So it's always nice, like not tug of war, but it's a nice uh, dynamic to see uh, a, a celebrity makeup artist. So talking about current makeup yeah. today, like what are our trends? What's the trend that you're like, okay, hate this trend. Which one do you want to see more of? I want to like get it on like day to day mm. makeup. What can I do that you love? Yeah. Okay. So I hate cut creases, cut creases. Like I think it's just, I think it's just overdone. And I think it just looks, um, one thing I don't think that people pay enough attention to in beauty is that we take so many women, heterosexual women take so many cues from the drag community and from the trans community from like, you know, and so, and we, and I think there should be more love because there's a sense of pulling oh. from 
if you really think about it, all of these things that are actually mm -hmm. coming from the kids, coming from the girls, you know? So um, being an advocate for uh, my sisters. And so what I would say is that sometimes a cut crease Love is that. too much. It's too damn yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are you going? Where are you going with that? You know, um, and so sometimes the over contouring, the over sculpting is it just reminds me of it's 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 a little too uh, totally. it's a little too evolved for days. It's funny. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like too um, like so looking I, at like the social media kind of influencer beauty world versus like traditional makeup artistry. I think there is such a big gap that a lot of people don't realize. I mean, obviously you realize, but what looks good on an iPhone in like studio lighting with the ring light isn't necessarily oh well, we got a little application going. On. Um, doesn't necessarily translate to in person or like couldn't be worn on the right carpet or wouldn't photograph right. So they definitely are two different skill sets, but they're not necessarily the same. I think that we should never see VCLs, you know, v, you oh. know VPLs, VCLs, visible contour lines. Mm -hmm. So whenever we start to see visible VCLs, graduate them back, move them back. Like, for example, I always have an a uh -oh. fun. No, no, you, yeah. you're, you're looking. So this is blush draping. What you have is blush draping. It reminds me of the 70s, mm -hmm. when it's basically a little bit of heat on the temples and cheeks. It's very like Bianca Jagger, Jerry Hall. But I like to take one of yeah. these and then soften the lines everywhere yeah. because it doesn't photograph well. And um, it, doesn't, it just doesn't look, it doesn't read it. I hate to say this word, but if you have on like a beautiful gown, you're going somewhere really important. Yeah. You don't want to cheapen <laughs> everything else totally. with amateur makeup. So Love continue that. to. Okay, I know we've got about like 15, 20 minutes left. So again, if there's any questions, feel free to hop in. I have a couple more like product related questions. So I'm just curious, like what you love and what's in your kit. So, okay, okay, tell me your beauty studio is gone. You've got no more makeup kit. You've got to restart from scratch. What are like the first five essentials? You're like, I need this now. Okay, knock on wood. Because that like what, like kids so going missing in the travel stuff. or whatever? Um, okay. Like, on, like so many of my friends oh. have been flying and oh, no. their kids have not appeared. I know that happened to Patrick Ta. I know that happened to like, uh, like uh, what's my girl from uh, Fenty? Um, uh, yeah. God damn, damn, damn. Oh yeah, but it happens to a lot of people. So get your kids in short, guys. Get your kids in short. Yeah. Apple eye ta Apple eye tags, what they call. Drop them in your kits. It's really key. Um, but well, what I had to start over. The essentials you're starting what your kit with. Like, yeah, I, I need this foundation. I, I need this moisturizer. Like. Um, mm. I would start with tons of concealers. So instead of carrying heavy foundations everywhere. I would use concealer, like for example, like this is like what Charlotte Tilbury's concealer, but I would do a handful of concealers in all different com complexions or all different colors because I can get a face going, I can highlight, I can sculpt, I can mix it with moisturizer if I want to brush it into the skin. So that is a hack for saving space and also weight because weight, it costs money to travel. What do you do? I mean, do you have like one big suitcase normally or how big and is your And then I have like, I have okay. like two Burton suitcases, so they're like two big rollers. Wow. Uh, snowboard cases, but and even so, for example, um, someone her name is uh, Rashawn. She basically depotted my kit. So I did masterclass.com. Shout out to masterclass.com. Uh, and so we, I basically took all my foundation sticks or and made them into a sculpting palette. So this is something that's going to save me time. I don't have to look for everything. They're all right here. And so I have a lot of these guys. I would okay. try to get this back immediately. And then and then and then um, I love this powder. I like it because it looks so sheer on anyone. Doesn't matter what complexion. It's by Makeup Forever. Um, it's called HD Loose, and it looks like it's invisible, but it will lock a smoky eye in. It will lock in wherever okay. wherever you need it. It gives you a little blur. I love that HD Sometimes powder. I use that all the time. I've had the problem though where I. Hey, shout out to Fashion Trust. Shout out to Fashion Trust US. I just see welcome, that. Welcome, welcome. Uh, um, I've had the issue so though, and I've learned very quickly. I overpowdered and got the flashback. So, like, what are your tips for not doing that? Is it just I need to have a lighter hand? Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you think that you're overpowdering before the powder, I always would also say make sure that you don't have a foundation that has an SPF on if this if there's an important day. So, if there's a prom, if there's a wedding, or if you know you want to hit the mark, and there's going to be a lot of photography. Don't use an SPF because SPFs have, or any SPF factor in your foundation or concealer because it has titanium dioxide, which flashes back. It's a barrier for the sun for a reason. Um, so I would make sure that the face is void of that. And then uh, your loose powder, you wanna make sure that it's possibly, it's possibly not as sheer as you need it. You possibly want a sheerer uh, loose powder if you're getting that flashback. But, as a hack, if you that flashback that you see could also be a very nice highlighting sculpting tool 
if you just okay. shear it out with the okay, soft rush. Okay, I'm like acne coverage or texture tips. Texture tips. I still struggle. Mm -hmm. I get the breakout, and I'm like, hey, this is a mag not a magic wand. It's a makeup brush. How do I how do I conceal this? I obviously can't get rid of the texture. What is your technique for coverage? That's a good, that's a good question. I have I, listen. I have I struggle with texture and skin too. So I would say, like for example, I have here uh, milk makeup. So milk makeup. Shout out to milk. We love those guys. Zana Razi is one of my friends. Um, and so milk hydro grip. Uh, primer. Oh, I you know, love put me on Jackie. To Jackie Aina. Put I've me on been watching her YouTube like, forever. Ooh. She's great. Shout out to Jackie. I love her, man. And so this right here is hydrating, but it does grip the uh, foundation or it makes the complexion adhere to the skin. If you have can skincare concerns, I don't like to say acne, skincare concerns, you possibly are emitting too much sebum. Your skin is possibly too oily. It also possibly is dehydrated. If you're not you know, consuming enough water or if your moisturizer doesn't hydrate you enough, your skin is gonna produce more oil. I mean, more oil for sure. So that would be one way I would keep this foundation on. But to apply the foundation, I'm not gonna use a brush if I have bouts of acne because it's gonna to continue to move the germs around. And we give ourselves our own germs. So you using your makeup brush on Monday and using it again on Tuesday is a no-no. I always use egg sponges. They're microbial and yeah. is that antimicrobial? Sorry. And so I always go in and I start to stipple in the foundation. So putting a little bit on the back of my hand and I'll stipple it in everywhere. And it looks like it's airbrushed on. It's light as a feather, but I get the coverage I needed in any direction. So dial it up where you need it coverage wise and dial it down where you don't. Always use it. Yeah, I love that. I was going to say also the sponges. sponges. What's your tip then for maintaining it, like keeping it clean? Do you just hand wash those? Even how do you do your brushes? Like what's your deep cleaning technique? So this is a hack I got from Shayla. Shout out to Shayla, makeup Shayla, right? Yeah. Um, I love my people. I love the community. So we got to always bring these guys in. And so I just take these babies. I'll throw them into a sock. Okay. I'll throw them into a sock and then throw them in the washer. And then just throw them in the washer. They come out brand spanking new, like literally brand spanking new. They're not damaged. There's no residue left inside of them. Um, oh my I gosh, you're blowing my eyes. I still need to do that. Okay, what about brushes though? I feel like I struggle between like using the alcohol to remove them and then brushing with shampoo. Is it is that what people are still doing? Yeah. Oh. I would never use alcohol brushes. So okay. I, I, I never. So I always treat brushes okay. like I would a lace front unit. <laughs> you know. So I would use shampoo for color treated hair to condition. But if I have a brush that is has a lot of residue from a cream foundation or something that is more saturated. Um, breaking it down with, um, I use like, like dish detergent, like Dawn, like an antibacterial dish detergent will get everything in there out, but it's not going to dry the hair like uh, any kind of alcohol-based remover would. I would, I would, I would cringe because my brushes have been with me since I was 19, and I'm, I don't want to say how I'm 41, <laughs> so they can tell if the brushes, they could tell stories, and they would need NDAs. Oh, that's too funny. So okay, good. So noted. No more alcohol in my brushes. Oh, I definitely do that. Sorry. Um, love that. Okay, I'm taking notes. I would love to do a little rapid fire round of beauty questions too, if you're game. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, so first I'm one, down. primer or skincare? I'm skin here for hair? it. Skincare as primer. Mattifying moisturizer is really a great way to lock in the foundation. Mattifying moisturizer. Uh, I, uh, I don't have it. it's one specific. I'm not okay, loyal okay. to any one specific. Uh, what about blush or bronzer if you had to pick? Oh, blush, hands down. I love blush. Blush communicates health. It makes you look sexy in the warm place. We want to we want to convey heat through the skin. Whenever you see heat picking out through the collarbone, the decolletage, the face, it looks like sex. It looks like love that. The okay, eyeliner. So blush for the eyeshadow. Yes. Eyeliner all day. It's the most, it's, it communicates the most. It's the oldest uh, makeup uh, tool we've ever had, known to man. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's- Just no it's felt tip liner. liner is no felt tip. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Felt tip liner. I like coals or pencils. Or what about lipstick, lipstick like, no or lip liner? Oh, that's a good question. I would say lipstick, lipstick, for sure. Lipstick is, I love lipstick by itself. Uh, liner sometimes, but lipstick always. And as, at some points, you can even soften and blur the edges so it looks okay. fuller. Okay, and I heard you talk about, you don't say you bake, you, what was it? You like to cook, not bake, right? I cook. <laughs> okay, so I cooking cook. I don't bake. or yes, setting? Yes, I don't bake. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, cooking, because I don't believe in a lot of powder. So too much powder is aging. Um, and it's just no skin that if you just left the spa, if you have, if you live a good mm. life, your skin is not that matte, not, not ever. And when I say that the spa, eating well, having sex regularly, <laughs> you have a luster. So never kill that luster, never kill the luster. You want to maintain it. You want to possibly control it that. a bit in the T-zone. Okay. Well, I am again, selfishly so excited for anyone that's just joining in now. I'm going to be one of the models at Sir John's Makeup Masterclass presented by That Good Co. It's on November 5th. And again, I don't know what look I'm getting, but I just know I'm going to have my makeup life change forever. So I'm a little scared. You're going to do my makeup so well that any look after that I do, I'm going to be like, it's not the same. Don't be it doesn't scared. Get the same. Don't be scared, babe. No, we're going to have a good time. We're going we're gonna to have a good time. And like I said, like what the, the thing I want to communicate with you and anybody who's watching, or if they're not, is the fact that we are using makeup to feel something and to feel anchored or to feel moved or powerful or, but not just pretty. Pretty is boring. I hate what to say. Yeah, pretty is boring. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not sustainable. <laughs> so what I want to sustain is the feeling that it gives you inside. That's why I coined a phrase, it's called dopamine glam. So I worked with psych.com and I coined the phrase dopamine glam. And so if you notice one of the trends now, you'll see everyone using these acid washes of color, these haphazard liners, you know, that were inspired by euphoria. So everyone, we're reaching towards something, aiming towards something, if you look at Pinterest, that makes us feel something. It's not fashion's reaction. If we look at, to give you a little fashion history, if you look at like the punk era of the early uh, 80s, late 70s, you know, based, that came out of London, it was all about anarchy, gelling your hair up high, spiking, you know? And so that was fashion's reaction, um, was rebellion. And then in the 90s, look at the Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, you know, the grunge era was all about anti-glam. It was about anti being anti-glamorous, you know? And so that's when the supermodels became super massive because the celebrities didn't want to be glamorous. Um, and that was fashion's reaction. And I think the reaction that we are having now is there's so much shit happening everywhere that we need to control how we feel by using a lipstick, by, you know, painting our nails a, a weird color or giving ourselves a dopamine hit, a serotonin hit. And so dopamine glam, Oh, I love that. Okay, well, I will definitely be using that as a tagline. I love that. It makes so much sense. Super fascinating. So I'll see yeah. you. I'll see you in Toronto, November fifth. You give the best question. You know what they say? Uh, what you say? You give good love. You give good questions, babe. Like honestly, I swear to you, I think that you should. Uh, uh, like, uh, if any editors or if anyone's hiring at Condé Nast, Hearst, or all the big publications. They got to check you out because you're doing an amazing job and you ask compelling. Oh, that's very, very curious. Very honestly, that means a lot coming from you. But also, it's easy cool. when I'm talking to people that are very easy to talk to. So thank you for giving me so much and sharing so many tips. And I, again, am so excited to see you November 5th. I'm so excited to learn from you. I hope some people that are in this live also show up and um, attend. I think there's tickets still available. Um, I think there are they in your bio. I think I have a link in my bio right now as well. I think they would be. On okay, yours, okay. I'm I a think I got them on my bio. If so, not, I'm sure people will Google can... that good co right. masterclass of Sir John in Toronto, right. November 5th. Um, we're so excited to see you there and learn from you. We're so excited to have you back in Toronto. And um, thanks again for sharing your time and your knowledge you with much. us. And I can't wait to meet you in person soon. I can't wait. We're going to do this. And guys, if you're following from my account, sweet. please follow Jacqueline. Follow Jacqueline. She's a wealth of information. She's You're a very sweet. Thank you so vibe. much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you in like two and a half, two I will. And a half weeks. Let's get the glam on. Thank you that. so much. Thanks everyone for watching too. Peace. Bye.